With only a minute and a half remaining until the conclusion of the Tournament of Power, all that remains on the stage are the broken and exhausted bodies of Goku, Frieza, and Jiren as the final battle between perfected Ultra Instinct Goku and full power Jiren begins as the ultimate battle, the be-all end-all finale of Dragon Ball Super ensues and the greatest showdown of all time begins. What is going on Dragon Ball fans? Welcome to my Dragon Ball Super episode 130 review entitled The Greatest showdown of all time the ultimate survival battle leading into next week's final episode of dragon ball super which is the be all end all conclusion the finale of the tournament of power and what a roller coaster it has been ever since the beginning of july of 2015 we've underwent both the good and the bad in dragon ball super and at this given point right now everything that's ever happened since the beginning of battle of gods has led up until this very point in goku having to master his training in achieving a power that not even the Hakaishin were able to achieve in going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the strongest mortal perhaps in the entire multiverse. Which of course up until this very point has been built up ever since the inception of the Tournament of Power and now we finally reached its conclusion, the end of the road between both Goku and Jiren and again for a quick plug if you guys are new to this channel and of course love Dragon Ball don't forget to punch that subscribe button with all notifications enabled that way you guys can be notified whenever a brand new video is is posted onto this channel follow me on twitter snapchat instagram and of course facebook to stay connected with me at all times in regards of dragon ball news information and updates hashtag dragon ball squad as we enter the final battle between jiren and goku as we kick off dragon ball super episode 130 exactly where we left off with goku having to look down on jiren and you can tell based on jiren's demeanor his eyes are beginning to shake goku looks down on him as jiren looks up and saying son goku and one of the kaioshin implies that Goku has indeed reached the max of his potential in mastering Ultra Instinct. However, Belmont still believes that Jiren is of course able to defeat Goku as he does believe that Goku at this point is still no match for Jiren. However, the second we get to see Goku take action and beginning to move around, we see how he was so fast, he was actually able to clip Jiren on the side of his cheek, making him bleed. His speed was noted by Piccolo to be absolutely incredible. Everyone seems to have been absolutely astounded as to how fast Goku was and even while Jiren was attempting to attack Goku nothing seemed to have worked in the beginning as Jiren was fighting Goku and using his attacks to try to more or less keep Goku on the edge and having his back up against the wall but every single time we see Jiren firing off these key blasts nothing seemed to have worked which I really did enjoy because that just goes to show the effectiveness of Mastered Ultra Instinct because Goku's speed and Goku's calm demeanor was so over overwhelming for Jiren, finally we get to see how Jiren's demeanor was more or less aggressive as to prior, he was calm. So it's as clear as day that Jiren's evolutionary process begins to manifest in this episode as prior to him being calm here, we see him aggressive, we see him more or less angry, and Goku, keeping the calm, cool, collected face he had on the entire time, was able to not only push Jiren back far enough in having his back up against the ropes, but also being able to get the upper hand and punching Jiren through rocks and being able to more or less be the one with the advantage as to prior he was the one at a disadvantage but there was a specific scene where Goku hit Jiren so hard as Jiren emerged from the rubble we see how he's beginning to get tired he's huffing he's puffing and we haven't seen that from Jiren before however it is noted by one of the Kaioshin that Jiren at this point although he is exhausted and he's feeling fatigued he still has what it takes to fully put down Son Goku and couldn't actually says how Goku's overwhelming Jiren while Goku goes on to state that's you father keep the pace going increase your power and then we see how Jiren after he emerges from the rubble he is beginning to get very angry in letting Goku know now it is time for you to feel the depth and magnitude of what I can really do and the minute we see Jiren begin to power up he begins to swell up in tearing right through his shirt and we see this massive fiery red aura just engulf the entire tournament and I really did enjoy how Jiren let out this massive roar, this massive scream. And again, similar to Topo, he became very muscular in stature. And I really did enjoy how Jiren's power was enough to shake the fabric of the entire world of Void. We saw fire all around the arena. The entire sky changed. It looked like the apocalypse happened in the ring. And that's Jiren more or less using his full power. So after he had transformed in releasing all of this power, he began 
begins to approach Goku, and the aura that we saw surround Jiren was very similar to the aura that we saw Goku have with Ultra Instinct and the sparkles and the way it flowed, and what I really did enjoy was seeing how even the other Kaioshin believe that Jiren is being overwhelmed so much that now there is no chance in Goku winning because Jiren had unleashed and tapped into his full potential, so there's no way that Goku would ever have a chance in beating Jiren, especially now with his full power having to be manifested onto the surface, but the second Jiren took it upon himself to pursue Goku, that's when things became very interesting because we get to see how Goku, more or less, he was fighting on par with Jiren because despite what Jiren was doing, he was able to register with Goku and being able to push him far enough even after Goku had caught one of his punches and using the force of the blast to push Goku down in having him drop on down to the floor. However, it didn't really affect Goku in that sense because even after we saw this beam struggle with Goku's Kamehameha and one of Jiren's attacks, we still get to see how more or less Goku was pushing back as Jiren was also struggling. So midway in this episode, we get to see how Goku ultimately succumbs to Jiren's attack and being engulfed by the entire blast. And I love how it reminded me so much of Broly when Jiren clenched his fist and the entire blast enveloped Goku and it swallowed him whole, thus erupting. It just looked like a massive explosion happening in the background, which also begs the question as to how strong Jiren truly is because he was able to push back an ultra instinct perfected Kamehameha in allowing Goku to ultimately just get engulfed in this blast. But when Goku emerged from this blast, when he emerged from the crater, he didn't seem damaged, but instead he pursued Jiren. But the one question I had on my mind is how in the world, this whole time, even midway during this fight, how in the world was Jiren able to hold his own against Master and Ultra Instant Goku and being able to take the hits and being able to take the punishment and still bounce back from that? And also being able to trump Goku in hitting him, punching him, blasting him hard enough to where Goku was able to feel the pain. And I really did enjoy how midway in this episode, everybody began to panic. At first, we get to see how Universe 11 began to panic with everyone wondering as to what Goku had done. And then midway in this episode, Universe 7 began to panic, and midway in this episode, once Jiren dropped Goku, and indeed, he did drop Goku, everybody, including Krillin, Beerus, everybody was so curious as to, is this it for Goku? Is he down? And we see him, he's in pain. Even though he's on the ground, his aura had completely faded away, we see how he's struggling to get back up. And that just begs the question that Jiren, at this given point, is relative enough to be on par with a mastered Ultra Instinct Goku, and as soon as as Goku gets up, Jiren is completely baffled as to how Goku's able to stand up. I loved how Jiren's expression was so alarming because I can only assume that Jiren had never seen somebody like Goku or has never met anyone like Goku who was able to endure and survive the attacks that he had given to him. But as they continue the fight, we get to see how Krillin suggests that it's because of Goku being the way he is, he's able to adapt and continuously grow during this battle and as soon as Goku begins to fight back Belmont begins to stand up and Belmont's yelling at Jiren so what I really did enjoy was how everybody was beginning to scream at each other everybody was beginning to more or less root on the person that they favored and I love how Master Roshi pretty much had these little visions in his glasses because he's, he's thinking more or less about what Goku's thinking about his family his training everything that he's ever been through and the adaptation that he's had and even getting a snippet back during the original Dragon Ball days when Goku fought evil demon King Piccolo, when he competed in the original Budokai tournament, the androids, Frieza, we get to see flashbacks of this, and as Piccolo begins to speak, Piccolo begins to inform everybody as to why Goku is fighting, and literally everything that's on the line, and Goku goes on to tell Jiren, this is our power, Jiren, and Jiren goes on to state, what are allies? What is trust? It's because he once trusted somebody that resulted in everybody he knowing dying so this goes back to Jiren's story and the fact that he's asking Goku what is even trust why do you trust why do you have such empathy for people what are allies I don't know anything about allies all I know is strength and towards the end of this episode what I really did enjoy was as they were fighting Goku's telling Jiren this is it this is what it means for us to be 
at our peaks, at our core, the strongest we can possibly be, and thus having to put Jiren in a position to where he got cracked on the side of the mountain, and then I think, I, I've never seen this before from Jiren, he begins to date back in thinking about his past. He begins to think about his past, he begins to more or less look back on his life, and we see the emotion brewing inside of Jiren, and we see the anger brewing inside of him, and I can really resonate with that, and I really did enjoy how Jiren at that given point, as he pretty much looked at Goku and thinking about his past, he unleashed this massive explosion, and we see how at that given point, he took all of his anger, and he fired it on the spectator seats, he fired it at Universe 7, and out of pure anger, everybody was just shocked as to what he was doing, and I really did enjoy that, I really did enjoy how Jiren just basically just said, fuck all of you, I'm going to wipe you all out, and he fired at Universe 7, he fired at the spectator seats, but Goku came in clutch in deflecting the blast away, thus getting Goku angry, because... The moral purpose here was Jiren questioning Goku and saying, what are allies? What are friends? I don't care. Strength is absolute. And that got Goku so enraged that it reminded me personally of when Goku fought Frieza on Namek and Goku pretty much after that wrecked him because both of them are fighting for what they believe in. Allies, friends, trust, hope, getting rid of your past, erasing the past, and having to more or less encompass what it means to be the strongest, and I love how Vegeta begins to cheer on Goku, and then Jiren's using his glare to try to attack Goku, this was more or less, the, the way this fight was drawn towards the end of the episode, despite Jiren having to use his anger to his advantage, and thinking about everything he's been through when he was a kid, Goku's still able to fire back, and pushing Jiren far enough to use a Kamehameha, and hitting him with such velocity and hitting him with such power, Jiren stood there and he was engulfed by the Kamehameha as Goku hit him on the side of one of the rocks. And as Goku fired off this Kamehameha, it was so powerful to the point where it literally caused Jiren to get knocked down and it pretty much powered him back down onto assumingly his base form. He wasn't in the same state that he was prior when he fought Master Jui Goku. So the force of that Kamehameha was enough to put Jiren down. So what I really did enjoy about this is the fact that Jiren did not care. At some given point during this episode, he did not care. And as Goku is standing above him, Goku goes off to finish Jiren, and all of a sudden, we see how he just falls over, and we says that his limit, his breaking point of the, of the gods and reaching that kind of power is taking a toll on his body. Because the second Goku was going to finish him off, Jiren bowed his head, because this is where Jiren understood that he was defeated, and as Jiren bowed his head, in knowing the fact that this was it for him, the second Goku was about to unleash this attack and putting Jiren down, all of a sudden, out of the blue, one of the most shocking things ever happened, as Goku from there, he begins to just power down, he doesn't understand what's happening to him, we see like this purple electricity, it's shining everywhere, and Goku doesn't understand what's happening, he drops on down, his power is fluctuating, we see like lightning all around him, it looks like he was being hit by something, because at that point, Whis even goes on to state that yeah, the god power is taking its toll on Goku, and thus causing him to resist result in pretty much powering back down, and even Belmont at that point begins to scream at Jiren and saying, this is your chance, this is the only opportunity you have to throw this man out, now do it, everyone is yelling, it was a moment to where Belmont is telling Jiren, if you don't do this right now, you are going to lose everything you've been fighting for this entire time. And of course, like anybody else, would we get to see how once Jiren stands up, he begins to hold the blast over Goku's head now, so they pretty much swapped roles and the fact that Goku was about to eliminate Jiren, and just as that happened, we see how Jiren holds the blast over Goku, and thus blowing the ground beneath Goku away, and thus, as a result, as Goku is plummeting on down into the void, all of a sudden, we get to see how, surprise, surprise, Android 17 is still in the tournament, which... I was completely shocked as to what I had just seen, because we all thought Android 17 was killed off, but instead, out of nowhere, it was almost as if the holy blast, the holiest of holy occurred to where Android 17 comes in, and he's standing side by side with Golden Frieza. 
it literally gave me goosebumps as I was looking at this because everybody who assumed that Android 17 was destroyed or got killed off was wrong because in the end, he was alive. But in the end, I would like to know what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. What are your overall thoughts on the battle between Master UI, Goku, and Jiren? What are your thoughts on Jiren having to use his full power and allowing that to manifest onto the surface for the first time and seeing the struggle between both fighters, eventually seeing Goku Goku have the advantage but then ultimately lose it during the course of battle what are your overall expectations as to what you guys look forward to next week and what are your thoughts on Dragon Ball Super essentially ending with the final episode having to premiere next week I do want to say one thing thank you all so very much not only for your continued support but for also having to stick on by for the channel for all latest in Dragon Ball information updates and news throughout the course of Dragon Ball Super's inception and being there for the amazing ride and experiencing both the ups and the downs collectively as a community for a show that we've all grown up to watch and love and enjoy that being Dragon Ball and to celebrate for that collectively as a community for the final episode of Dragon Ball Super next week I will be live streaming on the channel following the episode so make sure you guys tune back in for that follow me on Twitter to be notified whenever I'm going to be posting up that live stream thank you all so very much for watching guys once again tune back in for the breakdown and the predictions video for the final episode of Super and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you guys down in the comment section below. Have a great day, everybody. Cue my outro, bitch.